So, um, again, I'm all over these words. Uh, push the button here. Fantastic. So we talked about something being stiff and something being soft or supple. Um, here's this idea of stiffness again, the ability to resist deformation under load. Okay. If something is stiff, I guess it could also be strong, but what it means is you keep on pushing and it doesn't move very well. Okay. So what that means is it takes a large amount of stress to even achieve a low amount of strain. So how, how, where do we see that? Over here, in order, this is strain, this is stress, we have to go way high on the stress to even get a little bit of strain is what that's saying, if material happens to be stiff, okay? And again, slope is uh, slope of the stress versus strain. It's called the modulus. We know that y equals mx plus b. We've seen this equation for a while. So the modulus m, it turns out that that's y. Um, again, English. Um, the letter y and the, the why, that's y. The m in y equals mx plus b is not an s for slope. It's an M for slope, and you might say, well, as a math person, why the hell did they choose M for slope? They didn't choose M for slope. They actually chose M for modulus. A modulus is actually, in science, this. A modulus is a measure of a little bit of change of one variable after changing um, a different variable. It's the rise over the run. That's a modulus. So the M in Y equals MX plus B, even though we call it a slope, is actually the modulus. That's why we call it the Young's modulus. And again, B has still is still the um, the offset point from the beginning. So here's our here's our another picture of this guy over here. Here's stress on the vertical axis. Again, stress in this case being represented by the small Greek S for stress. Strain, a small Greek epsilon, which is stupid because there's no E in strain, but that's what that's what it is. We have two materials. We're showing two materials over here, and we're showing their young moduluses. And of course, the way you say modu modulus plural is you say moduli. Um, so this is the modulus of material one. This is the modulus of material two. This E that we saw before that we saw before that this particular thing engineering was talking about this slope being an E. Confusing as heck. Um, stress over the strain. This guy right here happens to have a much steeper slope, meaning you need to go way high on the stress axis before you will move over on the strain axis. This second material has a very low slope or a low modulus, meaning that you don't have to go very high on the y axis to have this thing stretch or strain a lot. Okay. So we're going to call this guy a stiff material. And this guy could be called a soft material, but we're going to throw another vocabulary word that we're going to use all semester, so don't get too crazy about it. And that's called a ductile material. So stiff, and then sort of the opposite of stiff, or less than stiff, is ductile. It just means it moves when you push it. So this material is very difficult to strain. It's very stiff. This material is very ductile. It moves very easily. Okay. So some examples, and this, is, this, this, this graphic that I found on the web covers all kinds of materials that we're going to cover. So way down here, and this is Young's modulus or stiffness, and again, the, the slope happens to be, happens to be as, I, as I think about it, the slope is force per unit area divided by a dimensionless number. So again, newtons per square meter, force per unit area, happens to be pascals we learned that in physics and if you divide pascals by a dimensionless number which is one you still get pascals so it turns out on this particular graph the units for young's modulus happens to be pascals but it's very very large this guy happens to be giga pascals just like megabytes and gigabytes um, so on the low side of things um, this would be very flexible or ductile our new word and on this side of things, this is a very large amount of Young's modulus, a very steep slope. This is going to be stiff, okay? And you'll notice they've plotted this thing in powers of tens. This is a logarithmic plot. Um, really, really kind of um, not much, not much um, pressure or not much uh, a, a stress at all to make this thing move. 
lots of stress. So down here on the very flexible, very ductile, we have polymer foams, we have rubbers, and we have polymers. So again, plastics exhibit plasticity, and they also have to be very flexible. That's where we're going to get polymers, rubbers, and foams. Way down here, these are the floppy stuff like my shirt, uh, like my skin. My skin happens to be a, a rubbery polymer. It's a natural, it's a biopolymer, uh, but it's down here not very, uh, not very, not very stiff. Um, a little bit further, another natural um, polymer. This time around, it's wood and wood products. It could be wood like a, like um, the the wood of a floor that you're walking on in your house, or a two by four uh, piece of wood that's in the wall of your house. Wood products has this region. We then get into composites, composites of metals and woods, and laminates. We'll be talking about all these terms later on in the semester. We finally get into metals in mixtures of metals we'll be learning pretty soon that an alloy is yet another vocabulary word which means a mixture of metals and then eventually we get into ceramics and glasses so on this giant screen here again our big three materials metals polymers and then ceramics and glass we talked about polymers and rubber uh, polymers and elastomers this is the generic order of their strength slash stiffness if you will down here on the bottom, the least stiff, the most flexible, are our polymers and our elastomers. In the middle are our metals. Okay, again, wood and wood products are actually polymers. In the middle are our metals and composites. And then at the very top are our ceramics. So um, you can sort of imagine that uh, walking on concrete or a marble floor is um, not very flexible at all. It's extremely stiff, extremely hard if you're talking surface-wise. This is just a picture of those things that we were talking about.